Welcome to ABP Network Presence Brand Transformation in the Digital Age, a special webinar brought to you by ABP Net Network in association with Exchange for Media Group. I just want to put a little bit of context before we start this lovely conversation. As we know, the legacy constructs of visual and verbal expressions of a brand need to be refreshed in today's digital context, where digital is changing what a brand looks and sounds like. As we have all seen, uh, today's increasingly digital world demands new ways to build and manage brands, and nobody can deny this. The next wave of growth, in fact, for brands uh, looks very different in a world where brand is experienced through platforms and ecosystems other than their own, where touch points and channels multiply daily, where interfaces become invisible, where machines are increasingly responsible for deciding preference. And to talk about all this and more, I have an expert panel with to introduce my speakers today. I want to welcome Mr. Jacob uh, Ben, co-founder and CEO Saffron. Uh, welcome Mr. Ben Bubnan uh, to this discussion. Mr. Pawan Saar, Group CMO. They are chairman and chief 82.5 Communications Ogilvy Group. Mr. Tushar Vyas, President Growth and Transformation South Korea Group M. Mr. Rohit Ori, Group Chairman and CEO FCV. India. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for taking time and joining um, today on this panel. Uh, I want to go to Ben first. Uh, my first question is to you, sir. Uh, my question is that why and when is brand transformation necessary in your view? Brands, <clears throat> brand, brands need to reflect the reality of an organization, of an institution, of a, of a place. Uh, brands uh, and brands get transformed or evolved as always as a consequence of an element of change. Change, uh, change is the driving force in brand transformation, and change can be uh, uh, because uh, the strategy of the organization decides to uh, launch a new uh, service of business, i.e. a creation of a new uh, business, or it has to adapt to new circumstances, or it has to be transformed profoundly given the, the context. At the end of the day, one has to interpret, one has to understand that brand is not an end. Brand is a means to an end. And, and, right. and, and brand works as a tool and that tool is used when change happens. So where the answer, I mean, a quick answer to your question is when change happens, brands need adapting. Right. Mr. Sada, to you, the same question a little bit differently. Uh, I mean, you've dealt and you have been part of all the big brands. Tell me, uh, when does a brand need to look at uh, transformation? Uh, and is it a regular phenomena like we need to uh, redefine ourselves every, say, three years, four years, and today's digital, the pace we have at the uh, what do, How do you look at this transformation uh, conversation? Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is able to hear me. I have a bit of a bad network, but my apologies. We can, uh, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, super. Uh, so I think, yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at uh, uh, some of our brand has kind of transformed over 20 years, uh, even if I go back to a brand like a Big Bazaar and FBB, I think a large part of our transformation has come from, you know, what's happening in the country, like what's the mood of the country, you know, what we are going through, uh, what is customers or consumers expect us to change. I think we have literally adapted that as, as a big point from, a, from listening to consumer and really adapting ourselves. So if I have to give you a parallel, uh, let's, let's look at Big Bazaar as a brand. When we started, I think we were absolutely no frill brand, uh, so much so that uh, when we were designing our store, uh, we were very conscious of the fact that it, it's a quota stone uh, store, for example, there has to be absolutely no frill. But if you look at over the years, uh, our country was sort of transforming. Uh, I think our public spaces were changing. Uh, if you look at our air, airports, they were the first uh, you know, social space, which was kind, kind of going through a transformation. So it's very important for us as a brand to even transform as, as consumers are transforming, as countries transforming. 
so we have taken a lot of cues from there and we have uh, the, the brand has transformed itself so much so that you know we created new new big bazaar concept which is called big bazaar gen x it really comes from that journey of of seeing what's happening in consumers life and therefore adapting and changing so i think that's the that's the bit that's the journey which we have taken and a lot of inspiration have actually come from india per se you know what's happening in the country i mean that's that's been a, a core focus of ours in terms of adapting and changing so now if i if i just speak from a digital world as you all know that covid has really changed uh, many things for many people even even including our own brands so uh, i think uh, you know i've said this in many forums but i'm going to highlight it again uh, the fact that you know omni channel was just a word for us but today it's reality you know you have to adapt it you have to be part of that world so i think i i i i kind of feel that you know a uh, brand transformation is as much as a human transformation which we all go through and it needs that on an ongoing basis that's my take right mr vyas i want to come to you before i go to mr chatopadhyay and mr ori for a different perspective uh tell me uh, what do you advise brands when it comes to reinventing reimagining themselves uh, uh, i mean how how do you look at it what do you uh, tell brands to do and how often do you tell them to do this yeah hi i roll and uh, yeah it's a in my mind it's a more of a continuous evolution process right uh, and if you are not doing that then you might have to take a knee jerk reaction which might be periodic uh, but if you were to sum up the previous two speaker i i would say it's a fight for relevance uh, so how do i ensure that my brand is relevant to consumer and if you go to the classical definition of brand it, it exists in a consumer mind and if it consumer is evolving the space you need to occupy in your consumer's mind also need to evolve and move with the time so it's something which is right. uh, which is which is continuous process uh, your brand experiences you set up uh, it, it has to meet with the sort of consumer expectation and consumer experience uh, need which is changing uh, with time Uh, so that that's uh, that's uh, would be my recommendation so it's more of a reading consumer signal uh, putting at a center and sort of crafting your sort of uh, brand and making it continuously relevant having said that it looks simpler in theory but it's a it's a damn difficult sometimes uh, when when you start looking from a sort of uh, brand owners lens uh, and then doing at a scale right right Mr Ori uh, I want to start with you this that when uh, brands look at definitely you know when they want to transform and there's a certain visual and verbal expression that has to carry forth uh, so from a creative uh, perspective uh, this question will also be answered by Mr Chatopadhyay uh, what can brands do to maintain that consistency and uh, does it kind of make a disconnect is there a fear of disconnect also from uh, customers you know if you completely go for a visual change and a verbal expression change of brands so you know the the interesting thing is and that's what um, i think you repeated that a couple of times is how often should one do brand transformation you know uh, to put it very simply what is brand transformation brand transformation is transforming how people feel and see and experience your brand right so so if if you're actually changing and transforming that uh, uh, you know how how organizations think about their brands how consumers uh, see feel and perceive their brands you know so those are the important pieces and uh, uh, you know the the interesting thing is that often times uh, in today's world uh, you know every change does not need to uh, result in a brand transformation right so so uh, what we have to really understand is what changes are really impacting the environment in which the brand operates in right so um and uh, to answer your question specifically i think the 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 important piece in this is and you know at fcb we look at brands as trees and what we say is that you know imagine a tree which has deep roots right and uh, uh you know a lot of foliage and branches so with the seasons and with uh, you know a uh, new environment and new seasons the foliage changes the leaves may fall new leaves come etc but to understand what the brand's roots are is perhaps the most important thing in brand transformation because very often you you cut 
the roots which are the deepest and and like uh, uh, tushar was talking about brands exist in the minds and hearts of people and very often if you uproot it uh, from the root uh, you know it it's a new brand and people feel that you know uh, this is not the brand that i knew this is not the brand that i've i've uh, known for for so many years so so the the trick is really about knowing what to retain and what to change right that is i think the the key and the most important thing in in brand transformation especially when it comes to you know the consumer face right mr chatopadhyay from uh, again a creative uh, perspective how do you look at this conversation of brand transformation and from a creative side uh, is it needed i mean how do you maintain that consistency also i mean if if it undergoes if a brand undergoes a change so i i think that there are two uh, aspects to it one is that uh, i think along the lines of what rohit was saying that there has to be a strong root or i would say a, a well defined brand purpose which should become your touchstone for deciding what steps you could take and what the brand uh, can stand for and mm-hmm. but the brand has to keep changing because the environment is changing it's about changing consistently with the purpose or the vision of your brand so what i would say about the present day scenario is that uh, I, i mean in terms of marketing and advertising i would call uh, the pandemic the great accelerator because i think changes which would no- normally have taken place over a few generations have taken place over a few months so uh, i think this whole yeah. digital explosion which had already started in india for example has just been accelerated people you know the the late uh, adopters have been forced to adopt it very fast so i think that for a brand it's absolutely important to be able to i mean earlier on we used to create a brand book you know there was this brand guidelines book and it told you you know this is how you can put the logo in the tv commercial and on the hoarding but today i think you need an entire operating uh, system or a dashboard because uh, you know when you go into digital uh, digital itself is not a monolith there are so many different aspects to it uh one interesting thing that i have observed is that you know i remember when when agent for example there was an agency that came up some years ago saying that you know we are going to be all about the mogo which is the musical logo and you know i thought why do you need a, an entire company to do that because you know we do it as a matter of course for but you know in the digital age that has taken a uh, center stage in a way because Uh, you know when you're ordering something on alexa or you know you've got a an app you know it's that notification sound is the thing that represents the brand a lot of times for you so yeah so i i think that uh, as you said consistency is is key uh, you know we i've just been i'm in the thick of a brand transformation exercise for uh, abp uh, which is one of the brands that i work on and uh, you know there were six channels and an app and they have strong roots and they have a strong sense of purpose which is about uh creating or helping create open and informed societies and you know, giving the the consumer a sense that their life can be limitless and at the macro level to say that you know we will stand for progress for india at a limitless level now when they when they have a legacy of six different channels across the country in different regional languages and uh, now an app which a lot of people only know it by the app but at the same time how how do you maintain consistency when uh, for example as a bengali in uh, mumbai i may be watching abp anand sometimes sometimes uh, abp news and uh, i may even catch a glimpse of abp mazha and i may have the abp uh, live app on my phone so the visual identity has to be consistent what it stands for has to be consistent the audio the sonic identity which i talked about earlier has to be consistent so i think these things are really important and as i said if you have a touchstone of this is my the purpose of my brand i think that helps you decide each of these things and what is the right step or what is the right way for you to take the step that you need to step to keep in step with the times right well answer and i do agree that uh, i mean it's been often repeated chief digital officer and chief creative officer is the covid now yes absolutely uh, mr ben bunan uh, 
so there are uh, approaches to you know transform a brand and we have seen there are certain uh, there's a playbook at work and there are some new approaches as well so what would be the best way of uh, brand transformation is there a step by step uh, you know that this is what you need to do in today's context uh, uh, what is the approach the best approach suited for brand transformation in your view the, no, <clears throat> the the metaphor of using uh, the tree uh, uh, as a as a brand, I think it's it's a it's a beautiful one and a very relevant one. And uh, um, any brand uh, needs to start uh, from a purpose. Uh, I think uh, as as the webinar goes on, we're going to start repeating ourselves because we all very much aligned in what is the what are the fundamentals of brand and the purpose. Um, you, in order to develop the purpose, you need to understand very well uh, uh, the organization. You need to understand very well the, the brand. You need to understand very well the different audiences. And I think it's a very important audiences that we haven't discussed yet, which is the internal audience. Uh, brands do not only live in the minds and hearts of our customers, but they also live in the minds and hearts of our employees. And uh, uh, the moment, uh, when we need to attract new talent, it's very, very important that the value proposition and the employee value proposition needs to be tackled in much, very much aligned with the purpose of the brand. Once you have the purpose aligned, then you have to understand what, not only what is the vision of the organization, but also what, whether, whether the organization is relevant to the different you know, stakeholders it has. And you have to find and identify and actually listen to those different stakeholders. You can start to draw the different elements, the different attributes that actually shape the fundamentals of the brand. Visually, right. um, uh, the whole exercise comes uh, obviously uh, uh, afterwards, but visually it is fundamental that uh, uh, the strategy is aligned with whatever uh, design gets implemented. At the end of the day, the brand is a promise of an experience, and this experience is not only felt through the, the eye, but also through the touch, also through the sound, and uh, uh, etc. I think it's fundamental that one understand that a brand gets built through the experience, and the experience not only includes graphic design, but many other uh, elements yeah. uh, where you live uh, and feel that brand. Right. But it starts with the purpose, absolutely. Right. Mr. Sada, uh, uh, tell me, what, what do you think are uh, the best approaches to uh, brand uh, transformation? Uh, what is what is what that people need to follow to make sure that the brand transformation is lasting and impactful the way it is, you know, uh, thought out to be? Uh, so I, I kind of uh, agree uh, what Mr. Jacob just mentioned. I think uh, when when there is a transformation which happens for a brand, I think internal stakeholders is extremely important, right? Uh, so many a times I think uh, a brand has a vision, it wants to take a certain shape, uh, it needs, it wants to move in a certain direction as I think all of all of them spoke in terms of, you know, uh, really transforming as, as per the consumer demand and so on. But I think this internal stakeholders as, is equally important because if, if they don't believe in what's the next step for the brand and if they don't live that or, or, or if they don't create that experience, I think uh, it, it'll just be a design element, right? At least we are, we are in a service brand, right? For us, it's extremely important. So typically what we have done is whenever we have kind of taken these steps of transforming the brand as per as per the need and want of the consumer or what's happening in the country as i mentioned so i think the one big part is actually to create that belief internally which is what i think we have always done it there are times where you know uh, we we have kind of uh, gone back and literally given the perspective of where do we come from and so that we all are aligned and we all are sharing the same experience. So I'm going to touch upon, I think that's a great point, which was, which was mentioned by Mr. Jacob. So I kind of totally agree with that. And of course, and because we are a service brand, whatever happens for the customer, you have to live by, live by it as Bible. Like you have to literally create those promises and deliver it, you know, in, in all the touch points today, I think the touch points could be immense. For us, the touch point is just not the store. I, I think there are digital touch points. There are many touch points where the brand is always interacting with the consumer. And how are we, how are we being consistent? 
there i think these are the two big parts internal as well as external to me i think both of them need to create that belief system so that we are finally able to address the required uh, you know experience to our customer i mean i i, I think uh, that's what we have done uh, in the past and most of the time mr vyas you have been part of many brand transformation stories uh, take us through that how do you handhold brands during this process and what approaches do you follow and advise them let me slightly broad based this discussion right we are talking in a sort of context of digital and uh, if we go down to what what has changed in terms of consumer and if you put a consumer sort of at a center and brand is something which is in a way closely uh, linked to consumer the way sort of consumer is moving then broadly uh, there are four things which is changing right in, one is in terms of how you are understanding the consumer in a digital world so insight basically the insighting has moved from an entire sample based environment to census based environment right a brand never had so much of data point to understand consumer uh, and and right. so various dimension of, and the depth of data which is available is unprecedented right so that's the one dimensional which has changed and one can call it basically move from a sample to census environment and that's the shift which has happened second which is a change which is happening right. is uh, uh, an entire approach to communication right and uh, this is again digital as unlocked so more and more you see a full funnel up uh in terms of uh, communication right so it's a the entire area has moved to reach to relationship and then entire spectrum you are operating in at various stages of that and uh, you are uh, you are either pinpointing or measuring across the funnel uh, where where your sort of communication working where your inputs are working so that that is the second change in my mind which is changing the third is the content and communication so one of the big change and i'm just talking slightly at maybe a 30000 feet but uh, from a brand created to it move to brand created and brand curated environment right so you are operating and straddling across both the environment so that so that's a broadly third change digital health driven uh, and fourth is basically the way you look at success metric um, and again the organization patience level also changed in last few quarters uh, so it's become more and more outcome and business focused so brands are not happy with looking at uh, in a way milestone they are asking for the result right so you are not happy if i if you go and tell them i have reached 2 million people but the questions are so what what is done to my brand what is done to my business and that's level of accountability which has been sort of asked and decision are made based on those those kind of parameters so i, I would say these are the sort of four key changes uh, which has happened in terms of the way uh, marketers have started looking at uh, consumer and that has implication in terms of how many of the decision may be made on the brand side right uh, mr ori uh, i mean mr vyas has touched upon and uh, given us this view of uh, that digital inputs you know being part of this conversation when you are talking about brand transformation from a creat- creative uh, perspective uh, how do you look at uh, the process of transformation what are the new approaches that you follow and how much does these digital multiple touch points uh, help the creative agency to look at transformation so you know uh... the purpose of digital transformation is not really to become more digital you know it is really to use technology uh, with the aim of accelerating growth or connecting or creating new relevance with with consumers so that is really at the heart of you know digital transformation so uh, when you look at your consumers and i think uh, uh, you know i i heard uh, you know a lot about the internal um, audiences as well and i think they are extremely important but the direction of the transformation is guided by consumers right the people who transform you know the brand's bottom line right so and the organization's bottom line that is important people who buy the product that is important because uh, you know they guide what is the need for transformation and i think you know uh, in in today's day and age i think the 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 biggest thing is to use disruption as a force of good you know and uh, uh, a lot of people look at disruption as uh, uh, you know a cause for just survival whereas what we are saying is that you know look at disruption as uh, the cause for transformation and regeneration reinvention you know it's like uh, when there's a storm in the sea the fishermen don't take out their boats into the sea they fish uh, they fix their nets right so the whole thing is really about fixing uh, what is the future direction of the brand and understanding that and and seeing what is uh, uh 
uh, you know, important and what is not important. Because I think at what COVID has really taught us is to understand what is simply not important anymore, right? And how do you focus on what is what is important? Uh, the last piece of your uh, uh, was really about uh, the touch points, right? So, so you know, I just want to be a contrarian, and I know Pavan talked about uh, touch points in uh, with a lot of passion. Uh, you know, the way we look at it is uh, touch points is a very uh, outside in way of looking at, uh, and it's very conventional uh, way of looking at, uh, you know, finding uh, points of connection between brand and consumer. The way we look at it is actually to make it more customer centric. So it is customer out. And uh, the, the interesting thing is actually uh, we are dictated by... Uh, Consumers. So, so for instance, if if I, I give you a simple example of you know wanting to paint your home, right? So when you want to paint your home, the first bit is the the whole thing about excitement and feeling that you know I, I'm going to do some major transformation here, and then you actually do uh, a lot of uh, you know fact finding and and you know due diligence, and then there's a lot of confusion. And then, you know, figure out the cost. Maybe you're feeling sad that, you know, my God, I can't afford this. And then you finally find a way to do it. And then there's, ex you know, that whole pride. So, so there are many emotions. There's an emotional graph that follows a path to purchase, right? So, so what we do is you actually look at and understand what is the emotional graph that uh, consumers are going through and figuring out what is the best time to actually talk to the consumer. So, so, you know, and, and what is, what particular message needs to go there? So what is the message when he's confused is very different from what is a message when he's excited and what is a message when he wants to show off, right? So, so that continuum of understanding the, uh, what we call uh, in our new tool of people and patterns and patterns of emotion to, to really understand in this context. So it, it kind of takes it away from being digital touch points or offline touch points or what have you. It's, it's really about finding how to influence that uh, and, and ride that emotional wave of consumers and, and products. Right. Mr. Chattopadhyay, you did talk about, uh, you know, that there used to be an uh, era of brand book, you know, Bill having that uh, kind of a black book, you know. But uh, tell me, how have uh, the approaches changed? What, uh, how, how relevant are legacy approaches to brand transformation at creative agencies still? Are there still those approaches at work? I think that, you know, we have many Indias. It's not just one. I mean, uh, there's one section of India that, is you know a corporate India, which is still you know resisting this uh, move to digital and keeping up with the changes, and they want to go about things in the traditional way. So, I mean, it's not that we don't we still do create brand books for some of our brands, but I think that uh, for the brands that really uh, are more sensitive to where things are going are headed and where things have already moved, it's it's a uh, I, I think the approach has to be. Uh, obviously in keeping with what is going on around us. And just to give you an example, uh, in COVID times, mm. I mean, we all know that restaurants have and hotels have suffered a lot. Uh, but I, I'm saying if you look at it from a consumer's perspective, his or her uh, cri criteria for evaluating which restaurant they're going to go to eat at was basic, based on you know, what is the kind of cuisine they have or what is the quality of food. Today, pr the primary... Uh, sort of a criterion will be safety, uh, health, safety, and hygiene. So I'm saying right. that for, for that restaurant, I mean, they may uh, still keep the, the, the heart of whatever the, the, the cuisine or the culture that they represent and that story intact. But onto that, they have to add this layer of uh, safety and health uh, to, to appeal to the consumer today. So I, I think that uh, th there has to be this flexibility. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, when, for example, when brands have moved into social media, uh, you cannot apply the, I think earlier on, it was very rigid in terms of what is the kind of communication and storytelling you could do. It had to uh, be a certain way. Whereas if we, once a brand is in social media and there's this nonstop marketing that's going on and nonstop communication, 
you have to be more flexible and you have to react a lot more to what's going on uh, what happened that hour uh, in the life of the consumer or in the life of of the country so i think that th that flexibility always on kind of approach is what what we're looking at now and i think rather than a a, a book with rigid guidelines what we look at today is uh, what is the what are the criteria we're going to follow to respond to uh, brand messaging requirements in a particular medium within digital so it's it's more the approach that we're going to take rather than uh, exactly defining this is how we are going to say it right uh mr benbunan uh, there's another context to this that uh, digital disruption the way we are seeing it you know i mean the way it is disrupting other uh, kind of forcing brands to reimagine themselves and uh, you know something led by data algorithms and a new context at play uh, tell me how has digital forced uh, the rise of uh, digital force brands to rethink refresh themselves is digital responsible to a large extent for this uh, change digital is a reality and we all live in the reality of digital technology has allowed us to do uh, so many things one of them is to experience our brands uh, in through a different platform which happens not to be physical but, but to be digital uh, brands have taken a uh, to uh, those that have that are not digi digitally native have taken uh, a toll and have uh, tried very hard to really um, offer the same experience be it uh, uh, physically or digitally um, uh, what's really 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 important that in my view one needs to understand is one cannot fall into the what I'd call the dictatorship of the digital uh, realm if one looks at the way brands live now in the digital environment there's a sea of sameness every brand tends to develop its user ex its user experience and user interface in such a similar way that at the end of the day you can't really uh, differentiate between one brand and the other what what ux and ui designers and coders and agencies aim for tend to be how do i make the experience as close as possible to click and buy and that and that has an impact in the way we actually live the brand has an impact in the way the soul of a brand is experienced and i think it's very very important even for those brands that are exclusively digital that when the moment comes to be physical take amazon and there's a moment in time where amazon becomes physical because we touch amazon when the parcel comes to our home it is fundamental that the soul of this brand gets to us in a particular way i'm not talking in particular about amazon but on any brand that lives in digital but then you experience in physical take airbnb take many brands i think it is fundamental that we be that we come to terms with this awful sea of sameness that the digital wave is taking every brand to and i think it's fundamental that transformation that has been inevitable because of technology and the digital uh, medium is a fundamental one for all of us does not come at the cost of losing your soul right right but sada tell me uh, what does brand building look uh, in this new uh, ecosystem where digital is the main narrative yeah i think uh, see i think all of us we spoke of the fundamentals of brands uh, you know will not change i think uh, that's that's always it's about you know brand being and humanizing of brand so uh, now as far as digital is concerned i think uh, sumanto already touched upon it so i'm going to elaborate i i feel there are two things uh, which is bringing a huge change for the brand uh, i think uh, you know brands traditionally uh, were built in terms of creating or they were 
they were more about creating monologue with the customers i think that's changed i think you need to have dialogue with your customers and i think that's how you need to create your brand so uh, one uh, you know the brand is as much as always on uh, from all perspective and i think that's what a consumer is expecting today right i mean it puts out something it expects you to respond and you literally need to be a brand which does a constant dialogue with the customers it's no longer are the days where you know one needs to call up the call center and get through the uh, you know the brand and you know uh, talk about i mean today i think there are so many things which is open up there so i think that's a big shift i won't call it change but that's a big shift from being a monologue brand to a dialogue brand i think that's that's a must that's a given uh, i think that's number one number two i think uh, digital also has brought in a lot of opportunities for us as marketers if you look at it right so if you look at uh, earlier as a marketer you know there was a more or less like a hindu calendar one used to follow and and therefore festivities diwali is diwali is important and you know end of the year christmas is important to generate business right but i think that's completely changed today i think what digital has brought in is moments and opportunities right now it's up to us as marketer what do we want to do with moments like how do you want to turn that moment into an opportunity that's totally up to us but those moments can be created literally on a daily basis and i think some of the brands are doing it amazingly well if i if i talk about brands like zomato or swiggy and so on and so forth so i think that's a big shift which has happened which we all as marketers we need to adapt uh, but yeah i think but this is this is for me is a very very interesting time where you know every every moment can be turned into opportunity and you can add to your business that's how i see it right uh mr vyas uh, when it comes to a brand which is not digital first going and thinking about digital because the surroundings are have become digital and the conversations are led by digital uh um, what factors do you think kind of impact brand transformation in such cases i'm going to build on what uh, sort of pawan has mentioned right so it's a uh, i think the experience is a sort of center to the entire narrative and uh, there is a various dimension to that and if you look at uh, in in that environment eventually brand need to find the consumer right and so how are you going to do it uh, identifying relevant consumer is in the digital environment uh, sort of building right uh, in a way experiences within that environment how you communicate uh, and it goes goes all the way down to what uh, pawan was mentioning right so how is your brand appearing in my feed when zomato talks to me uh, is it is it something relatable to me so that entire humanized way of sort of connecting is also very very important uh, the second piece is basically uh, in a way building a path of a list friction uh, so um, again we sort of classically we talk about the various stages of cycle but how do i create a consumer journey which is a path of almost no resistance uh, and when and very welcoming to sort of consumer in my world right? so that's the second piece i would say and third is um, you know we don't think offline online as a two different world uh, but well think as a sort of hybrid environment right because consumer is not thinking and differentiating that clearly it's a one journey right and he experiencing the brand in different environment so how do we start thinking consumer journey first how do we start thinking in terms of omni channel or a hybrid environment uh, and then sort of building experience is very important so i'll i'll maybe talk about those three points right uh from a creative pers- perspective mr ori uh, you know we say that digital has a certain uh, following in terms of uh, demographics and you know and and a legacy certain you know uh, following so from perspective how do you ensure that the two maintain a certain connect you know at all times when a brand goes for transformation you know because there are two dynamics at play there's a different audience for the digital and a different audience for the legacy Uh, how do you bring them together in one visual in one expression and they can relate to it at the same time so when you say a uh, different audience for legacy uh, meaning the 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 say, traditional say example, consumer yes, base yes yes ah, yes, okay. yes yes so so you know the it's a very simple answer actually uh, uh, it doesn't require too much of science because you know finally whether it's on digital offline online whatever uh, we are talking to human beings right we are Uh, you know at times we get so confused and convoluted in our own thinking of ai and machine learning and this that finally you're talking to human beings so you need to talk emotion right and emotion if if you know is relevant 
and from the lives of, uh, you know, the consumers reflects their real lives, uh, reflects, you know, the way they live, it connects, right? So, so the whether it is, uh, you know, something that, um, uh, you know, you, you find that uh, will the digital audiences like this or will the uh, offline audiences like this, the importance is really about brand being true to itself. Right. So like right. what Shumanto also said, you know, it's it's really about identifying and staying true to your purpose. Right. How you define it, how you redefine it. You know, it, it may in, a, in the digital world, you may find a different interpretation of that purpose in the in the, uh, you know, offline world. You may find a different interpretation. But the fact is, it's held together by by a similar touch feel and nobility of the brand. You know, so it's not that. Uh, you know, the brand behaves completely differently in different environments. That I think is schizophrenic, won't, won't work for any brand. So for instance, if you, if you take Amul, for instance, right? The Amul, famous Amul holdings, which are the longest lasting campaign in the history of Indian advertising, right? So uh, look at, I mean, it's still relevant, right? So whether it's a young person or an old person, everybody has a good laugh, right? So, so it's it's capturing. Uh, uh, it's an insightful take. It's it's the way uh, you know a comment on 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 the way we live and uh, what we do. And because it's such an insider's uh, point of view, it connects seamlessly to everybody, right? Whether you you are what, seeing these um, Amul. Uh, you know, takes on your mobile or you're seeing it on a hoarding or you're seeing it in newspaper, depend. I mean, it, it's immaterial where you see it, actually. The with screen, which these are all mediums, what you say, how you connect, what uh, emotion you evoke, I think is at a premium today more than anything else. And above it all is creativity. Right, and I I, I know uh, you know even uh, uh, Jacob talked about it is is that you know there's a sameness right so that's the biggest thing that we need to watch out for because you know it's it, it's it's a temptation you know for all brands to take the easy route out but to really stand out to make a difference it's what's the uh, take that you have what's your point of view very important in today's day and age people want brands with a point of view you have to take and that point of view of course comes from your brand purpose you know so so it's a lot of uh, uh, pieces there but uh, i think the important thing is really to be human you know and if you are human i think uh, uh, you can take any uh, you know uh, segregation of media or whatever it is i think that that's subservient to that really Right. Mr. Chattopadhyay, same question to you. I mean, how do you maintain that consistency of visual, you know, when it comes to brand that is addressing two different audience segments or multiple audience segments at the same time? So, uh, actually, this, another point came to mind from your last question, which was, I think one of the big changes that we're seeing today because uh, of digital is that Earlier on, you know, you could uh, have a message which is which was crafted for your communication, where you could sound very noble and stand for a cause. For example, today, because everything can be, you know, Google, uh, everything can be researched. A, a consumer today wants wants the brand to actually live what they're claiming to espouse. So, if if you're a brand which says that you know we stand for gender equality. And then, you know, somebody puts out an article uh, saying that, you know, uh, they pay less to their female employees or their, their female uh, uh, brand ambassadors what? than their males. Sorry. That, that is good. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Shumato. Or, or you organize a webinar with only men, right? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yes. So, yeah. So, so, uh, but then, I, is there some diversity because I'm not Indian? Yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. That, that's one part of it. Uh, another thought that came to my mind was, you know, we're talking about the the uh, so to speak the digital versus the non-digital. I think in the next few years, I think that they're, they're saying that by uh, 2025, if not earlier, there are going to be 900 million uh, digitally enabled consumers in India. So, you know, it's all going to become digital, and the word digital will disappear because there's not going to be uh, yeah. anything yeah. else. 
Uh, and then coming to your question on consistency, uh, I'll just give you an example of a brand that we work on at 82.5, which is Bisleri. Uh, so uh, more, more than a year ago, or maybe a year ago, we came up with the, the, the Bisleri Camels campaign, which was one of the most effective uh, campaigns that uh, you know they, we had done for them in many years, because, you know, as you know, that Bisleri became like a generic word for asking for or you ask for a bisleri and you any know, brand of water. So, you know, in, instead of getting like a, a water expert in a lab coat, we got the camels of Rajasthan to be the, the spokespeople. So that was a very, very successful campaign. And then uh, in the last few months during lockdown, we had to create communication for them. Uh, obviously, which, you know, wasn't going to dramatically depart from this uh, television campaign that we had done. Uh, so we, we created a... a campaign once again with a camel called Badal and this was the monsoon campaign and it uh, talked about the fact that you know you, you get safe uh, delivery uh, contactless delivery of the water to your home which is what a consumer is looking for today so I think that we it's in a sense there's a lot of consistency in terms of the creative platform uh, except this was much more digital it was uh, using animation as an execution device and at the same time if you saw that uh, campaign that we did a year ago, which was uh, more on, on uh, television, and you see this campaign on digital, they are speaking in the same voice. It's, it's a certain brand personality. There's a quirkiness to it. Uh, and it, and it right. connects with, with the masses. So I think that these things, I think as we as creative people, you know, when, when there's a new thing that comes in, probably when TV came in after print and radio, people said, oh my God, you have to, you know, people sort of look at the technology and forget that storytelling or creativity is at the heart of it. And uh, right. whether you are crafting a video uh, for, um, you know, for the internet, whether you are, uh, you know, you're in the gaming world and you want to create so, somehow uh, put your brand in the gaming world, it's all about telling a story with a consistent voice and at the same time adapting to the reality of that environment. So I think right. it's not, I think Rohit said it's not rocket science, really. It's about understanding human emotions. And then whatever is the latest technology, uh, which, you know, I think Jacob touched yeah, upon right. technology. It's you, you take whatever is the latest technology and you do the storytelling. You obviously use that. I mean, there was a wonderful um, example of a, a Diwali commercial where, uh, you know, where they actually whichever locality or area of India that you were watching that TV commercial, you know, it was actually giving you links to local businesses from which, where you could buy those, the kind of things that were being talked about in the ad film. And this was a way for that brand to reach out uh, and help, you know, help the community. So, and even today, like Amazon, uh, which is as far away as you can get from brick and mortar is helping out Kirana stores by giving them a, a space on their platform. So yeah, right. so sorry, I know I'm digressing and talking about all sorts of things. But yeah, so I think consistency is if you know what is the, the true essence and soul of your brand, and we as creative storytellers will tell the story adapting to the different mediums. So I, I, I don't find that, I just think that you know you need to know how far you can stretch right. and where to pull back. But I think it's also, like I said right at the beginning, that if you know what your brand purpose is, then you can use that as a touchstone to decide that if you're on uh, Facebook or Instagram, that you know you will take certain liberties versus if you're on your uh, company website or uh, you know on an e-commerce mm -hmm. portal, you will talk about it in a different way. But the heart of it is the same. Right. Right. I'm following this order. I come from. Uh... Ben, Mr. Ben Bunan, because everybody has to wait equally. So my question to you, sir, this I we have some audience questions as well. So we have 10 minutes. I want to fit in a couple of them. Uh, tell me, so uh, Mr. Ben Bunan, is uh, when you talk about brand transformation and we have done it, for example, a brand does it, in this digital surround sound that we have, is it easy to uh, measure the impact of it? The good thing about uh, data analytics uh, and uh, uh, the capabilities that we have now in terms of uh, uh, mm -hmm. how uh, users uh, actually uh, behave and uh, interact with uh, uh, our uh, digital um, 
proposal help us really uh, create new KPIs and see uh, to what degree the performance of our uh, uh, brand is efficient or not efficient or uh, uh, works or not works in terms of uh, clicks to exit or not click to exit or how many seconds uh, are they uh, stuck to your uh, to your screen before they go to the next one or how etc 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 so the way of measuring the impact of brand online is much more it's easier i'd say i don't i don't want to say it's more efficient but it's easier than it is offline not to disregard uh, the uh, the impact of offline and not to disregard the impact of uh, a seamless experience be it on or off but i think uh, data analytics allows us to really come up with very suit very solid and very good info about uh, the performance of a brand online mr sada your thoughts on this yeah so uh, yeah I, i kind of uh, agree uh, in terms of what mr jacob said uh, i mean you know today i think uh, digital obviously gives you a lot more data insight which is more from a numbers perspective perspective and you can get to know a lot but uh, the thing is you know how you want to use finally these data you know for your business at a larger brand perspective so uh, there is you know uh, from a brand perspective one needs to be slightly careful but just about creating conversion i think these data are extremely useful but from a brand perspective you obviously need to go back to the brand purpose and see what consumer consumers are saying and how you want to use it yeah right uh mr vyas at the agency uh, level tell me how do you evaluate the outcome of brand uh, transformation uh, i mean how how does this work and uh, has digital uh, helped in making it simpler yeah i will answer in a two way so i think first of all uh, like a measure what matters right in terms of there is a enough amount of noise also in the market uh, in terms of multiple data points so it's a very important what you are going to measure against and once you identify uh, it, it's sort of relatively easier and uh, all of us know that fundamental truth is only two part what it does in terms of brand which is more in the mind measure area and the second is what it does in a business right in terms of lead acquisition or a consumer or growth or whatever you measure so these are the sort of uh, two ultimate truth which remain uh, right. on your second point uh, in terms of uh, especially in digital environment the my answer would be depends right in terms of if brand is deeply engaged with consumer uh, uh, the evaluation or any change which is happening at brand level immediately get noticed and there is a feedback mechanism right so be it in terms of social media and uh, uh, consumer start reacting to any change happening at the brand level uh, but if you are not uh, mature or not reach that level then it doesn't get noticed so it's important uh, to sort of reach that level where you can get a feedback mechanism and start and establish a dialogue with the consumer right mr ori you said rightly that all of this ai and everything is in between but we are dealing with essentially human beings you know so tell me how long does it take for a brand that has transformed itself to set in and build a new connect with its audience in your view right on mute uh, uh okay mr ori can you yes yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no um Uh, that's that's a really difficult question because i don't think there's a, a playbook of you know length of time when a brand has to uh, you know you know that there is there is a uh, attraction behind the brand and people obviously understand and and you know the the brand is actually looking at uh, uh, you know a new connection so the the way we we actually look at it is obviously uh, you know if if it's a heritage brand or if it's a new brand and and you know how uh, uh, changing perceptions of a heritage brand are uh, uh, really much harder and take a, a longer time than obviously a new brand which is coming in can create new perceptions and and uh, easy for for brands to actually do that but uh, right. you know uh, what the way we look at it is obviously track the consumer now and uh, uh, like everybody has been saying that uh, digital has made it easier for us to actually look at different points and look at uh, you know how the consumer is actually connecting uh, and buying uh, uh, the brand so so you know it's it's a it's different strokes for different folks i mean it's i don't think it's possible to say 
what specific time frame uh, uh, this would really mean, uh, you know, and the connection would actually happen. Uh, it, it really is, is depending on the market situation, the brand history, the consumer set that uh, we, are, we are talking to, and uh, the complexity of the environment, you know, so, so a lot of that will actually dictate the length of time. Right. Uh, quickly, uh, Mr. Chattopadhyay, I mean, so uh, does a creative agency's association with the brand end with campaign likes and buzz around it or should it be beyond it also? So I think that uh, the way that we approach it is that, you know, we are sort of marketing partners for the marketing teams in our, uh, you know, we, we solve business problems for them. So I don't think that it ends, of course, me, me basically being a creative person for me, my greatest high happens when, you know, the, when we've created something great. And of course, then you're waiting to see what is the response to it. And if it's got a great response, then, uh, then nothing like it, but certainly it, it doesn't end. And again, coming back, you know, we're saying in the digital era, everything is far more measurable. So, you know, the, the response, uh, good or bad, far more quickly than you, than you did in the past. And, you know, and, and also I think what digital and social allow you to do is this kind of quick AB testing. I mean, today, you know, we, we, we can talk about putting out two alternate pieces and seeing which one fared better and then putting our money behind that. So I think that, uh, we're far more involved in the, the the client's business and the client's brand because we have to be, frankly speaking. You know, it's a you can't today be an advertising agency that says that okay, now I, I've done this really creative campaign for you, and you know now the rest is up to you. So it doesn't work yeah, like that. You're constantly interacting and co constantly uh, uh, fine tuning uh, because we, as the consumer feedback is coming really rapidly. And so you have to react to that and then course correct and keep on building from uh, your core values. Uh, so I have these audience questions. This one is for Mr. Sarda and Mr. Vyas that uh, with short attention span, at we, as we all know, how does a brand ensure etiquette uh, reach and top uh, of mind recall? Mr. Uh, Sarda first. I mean, when you're, you know, there's short attention span and you are transformed, how do you ensure that you have enough, you know, uh, top of the mind recall? Yeah, so I think uh, we are we are living in the tap tap world. We literally tap tap every moment on our mobile all the time. And, and I'm sure each one of us, we look at our, um, you know, mobile spent uh, time uh, on each of our device. I'm sure it's going to be three to four hours minimum in a day. So I think, yeah, there is too much of information, too much of bombarding the way I, I personally believe in that the brands need to create three second stories. I think you have to have ability to say what you want to say in three seconds in this world. I mean, it's just a metaphor. I think uh, that's that's how short lived or that's how that's the kind of time a consumer sort of gives you. If you are able to able to crack it, uh, I think a uh, brand will see reach, awareness, whatever you may call it. But I completely believe in this world of three seconds and I live by it. And Perfect. What Mr. Vyas. What I would add to what you just said, yes. and I totally agree, is embrace truth. If what yes. you say is honest, if what you say is direct and is truthful, you will succeed. Truth is Right. right. Uh, Mr. Vyas, your thoughts on this? Yeah, uh, completely with Pawan in terms of basically you need to build a in a way, feed stopper or thumb stopper, right? So that's the ultimate uh, test in terms of your, uh, in a way, engagement, your communication can drive. On top of right. that, I would say uh, segmenting uh, consumer and giving relevant message is, is also a good starting point uh, uh, to sort of customize your message by various segments. Right. Mr. Ori, for you, question, uh, quick question. Does uh, so I, I just wanted to say something to Pawan. I said, Pawan, I, I have to represent the agency side. Let's make it six seconds, uh, not three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so why I was very careful to say it's just a metaphor. <laughs> yeah, I like the way that you added that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ori, for you, there's a quick question. For duration. Uh, the question, Mr. Ori, is uh, does digital internet give actual freedom to creative? teams to toy with new ideas in the absence of a limited 30 seconder? You know, uh, that's a classic trap because, uh, you know, everybody says that, oh, 
you know, we don't have money for uh, mainline, so let's do something on digital. And when you present a bold and brave idea to a client, the client, you know, oftentimes says, uh, that's okay for digital, but not okay for the main brand, you know, and I don't believe that. It, what is okay for the brand is okay for the brand, right? So, and today, you know, you digital is not some hole that you can go and hide. You know, that's where the light shines and before you know it, it'll be over everybody else, right? So, so you can't, there's no way to hide for brands anymore, right? So to say that, you know, on, on digital, we'll do this and on mainline, we'll do this, I think uh, uh, does not work at all. Right. Mr. Benwood, and the last question to you, uh, how can you build brand loyalty in this digital age? Is it difficult for uh, brands to do it? There's a question from Uday Vahi. This is a question. Goodness. Um, uh, brand loyalty, uh, to me, brand loyalty is built around, as I said before, I think, I think, um, being, um, particularly when you, when you targeting Gen Z's and, and, and the new, and the new consumer, I think it's fundamental that, uh, brands do not, uh, play with words, are direct, are bold, and are honest. I think the only way to really build loyalty is to be uh, relevant. Uh, and once you're relevant, you can differentiate yourself. You're relevant right. if you're honest and you're truthful. Right, right, right. I think we are, uh, I mean, I we've just, just overstepped the time. And thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ben Bunan, Mr. Sardha, Mr. Chattopadhyay. Mr. Vyas and Mr. Ori for those wonderful insights. And this brings us to the end of uh, ABP News Presents Brand Transformation in the Digital Age. And hopefully, we'll see you soon with a mixed panel, as Mr. Ori pointed out. Very yeah. soon. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank